Yo, what's good, fam? I'm gonna show you how to use the iPhone as a MIDI instrument inside of the Machine 2 software. Pretty much for what you're gonna need for today is just an audio interface that's connected to the computer, as well as the Machine Controller, of course. And uh, for this demonstration, we're gonna use the Machine 2. This is not the, the latest machine that's out, but if you have an older machine that has a MIDI connection on the back, and the audio interface, you should be able to do this. It doesn't matter if you have a Mac or a PC. It works both with the Mac and PC. Today we're using a Mac, but if you have a PC, it should still work the same way as long as you have an audio interface and a MIDI connection. So pretty much what you're going to use for the iPhone portion of this, of this uh, situation is the iRig Pro. Now this is the iRig Pro uh, mono connector. This uh, is typically used for a uh, guitar, but to, for today's demonstration, I'm going to use this to connect the iPhone into uh, the audio interface of the uh, complete Audio 6. You can connect your MIDI directly to the controller or to the Audio 6 because this has MIDI and audio as well as this just has MIDI. So if you have a a newer version of the machine that has both MIDI and audio, audio you can connect it directly to the uh, to the machine controller. So for the iPhone portion of it, you're going to need this cable, which is a Thunderbolt cable that which connects the Thunderbolt cable to your iPhone from the iRig Pro. So connect it to the back of the iRig Pro. And then we connect it to our iPhone. Then we take from the from the iRig Pro audio portion of it. We're gonna go to the headphone jack icon, which is the out of the of the iRig Pro, which would which we would use typically to use the plug-in headphones. We're going to plug this instead. Go from the headphone jack portion to our audio interface, the uh, first connection on the audio interface face, and put one. And then we're going to connect our MIDI from our iRig Pro from our mid from the iRig iRig Pro uh, MIDI connection. And we're going to connect it to the complete audio 6. As I said before, you can connect it directly to the machine controller if you wanted to. But for today's demonstration, we're going to connect it to our audio 6 just to keep it a simple, clean connection. As I said before, it's a, five, a standard 5-pin MIDI going into the MIDI of the audio interface, if y'all can see that. I'm going to go out on the out of the audio interface into the input of the iRig Pro. Now, this is just, is not the standard uh, MIDI. So, if you find that you're not getting a connection or if you find that your uh, instruments are not being triggered, you might need to switch them around or make sure you have a solid connection because sometimes these come loose. Make sure the cables are, are solid as far as the connection goes. And let's get our other cable. Oh, I didn't connect that one. Let's connect that one. So they're both connected, MIDI in and out is connected on the back of the uh, port of the audio interface. And now I'm gonna connect it to both the MIDI on the audio, the iRig Pro. Now we have a solid connection. We're gonna test out the sound coming from our phone that is making its way to the computer. We wanna make sure that the sound levels turned all the way, turned up at least so you get a, a solid sound. Now we don't hear anything when we trigger our phone. So we want to make sure that our sound on our audio interface is on, turned up. 
Still no, still no sound. I want to make sure that's checked. Now, if we go to our computer, we want to go to this icon right here. If y'all can see that, hopefully y'all can. And go to our sound. And then we want to change that to sound, audio, destination. That's an output, right? We don't want output, we want input. Go to input, or sound source. And we, we got the sound going in from that first input of one. We got it turned halfway, that way we don't blow our speakers out. We go back to one, or one left and right. That we get that way we get a uh, stereo sound. Now, if we check the sound on our core gadget, you see sound is being triggered out of there. Make sure we check the sound on the back of our iRig Pro. Now, if we try it again. Still got sound coming out. Make sure it's solid connection. Now the reason why we don't have any sound is because we don't have our speakers turned on. <laughs> Duh. Now let's try it again. Let's turn up our speakers. Now you hear a sound coming out of there. So now that we got our audio situated, I chose left and right on our source so we get, that we get a, a stereo sound. Now we're gonna do our MIDI and we're gonna choose, set up our MIDI. Now, say on your phone, if you have multiple instruments, with Core Gadget, you have the ability to choose I think up to uh, choose as many instruments as you want. I think up to 16, I think. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, to get our our sound source set up on Core Gadget, we want to go to that icon right there, that little uh, gear icon. And for the MIDI input, we want to choose Advanced. That's going to allow us to choose different MIDI instruments to trigger they be triggered at the same time within Core Gadget. You can go to easy, easy, and what Easy does is allow you to it disconnects the other MIDI instrument MIDI instruments as you as you switch between them. So, like, say we had this instrument selected. If I uh, change the instrument, then it's gonna disconnect from that instrument and then choose that instrument to be, choose this instrument to be triggered. But if we go to advanced, we can have more than one instrument playing at the same time. So we're on advanced. And then we go to MIDI input. We have it set to iRig IO. If it's not, you want to go to iRig IO. And then uh, choose destination 2. And so if we have another instrument... If we have, you know, another instrument, we can go to I, I, uh, Pro I.O. and choose channel three and so on and so forth. So, like, I have that set to two just for the simple fact that I want MIDI channel two to trigger that particular instrument. So right now, we're not triggering MIDI. But if we have, let's say this pad right here. We're gonna have that trigger this instrument right here. So uh, on our software portion, we want our des our destination to be uh, selected as the complete audio six, which is coming out of the complete audio six interface. If we have the audio or the MIDI coming out of the com con uh, MIDI controller, we would choose the machine controller MK two. 
but we're gonna use the complete audio six as our MIDI device today. Hopefully, hopefully I can see that. And we're gonna choose destination two for that uh, particular instrument, the Montreal. So if we hit the pad and we have our connections correct, it should it should trigger the sound on the complete on the Montreal. But our connections may not be solid or may not be correct. So as I said before, if you don't have a solid connection or if you're not getting any getting any MIDI being triggered, switch them around. Now let's try it. Again, I messed up on that MIDI connection. That is the input as opposed to the output. You don't want to put the input as control, complete controller six. You want to change that back to all or default. You want to go to the output portion, destination, MIDI, destination, Complete audio six, channel two. And it sounds like we have our connections crossed. So let's cross them back over. And hopefully this time when I trigger the pad, it will trigger the sound on Core Gadget. The cool thing about that is if we go to pad mode and we go to keyboard, we have the complete range of keys. So say we switch the instrument over to a 16 pad instrument. And instead of having a uh, this on keyboard mode, we have it on 16, we have it on, well, we have it on keyboard mode, but now for this particular instrument, you notice it only has 16 pads. Yeah, 16 pads. Now with the core gadget, with a 16 pad, the core gadget with a 16 pad instrument, you only have, with a 16 pad instrument, instead of start, starting at C3, uh, like the machine starts at, you want to go to C1 for a 16-pad instrument, and that's where the sound starts to be triggered within the uh, core gadget. So if we go back to C3, it's still triggering that first instrument, but we have to set our destination on the machine software to C3. I mean to destination channel three, cause that instrument is on MIDI uh, destination three, right? On the output portion of it. Change the octave to uh, C1. And now when we trigger, when we hit the pads, we should have to hear the sound. So there you have it. Hopefully this explanation, this tutorial was sufficient enough for y'all to get started with using the iPhone within the machine software. If you have any questions, leave a comment at the, at the bottom of this video. I hope it helped. Deuces.